bones is you find a barber shop, you walk in and you go, cut my hair, put it up in rollers. Sorry, man, we don't do perms. We cut men's hair. And then you make your bones by suing them or, or, or getting the city to find them. It's, it's just... It, it, it just, it's like they have something to prove. You said that during the break. That's why I brought that up. You, you said it's like some kind of weird payback. Can you explain that to me? Well, you know, when you watch and if you follow the history, and it's really important that we know our history, folks. We have many, many black folks in this country who are obviously descendants of slaves. And there's a lot of anger that still exists today. Now, with here being in Texas, something very important happened on the 19th of June, 1865. In Galveston, Texas, the news arrived that slaves were free. Now, if I do my math, that's just over, just a couple months past 150 years ago. So what is the beef? What is the problem for any black person today to be mad at a white person today simply based on race to try to blame them for something that happened 150 years ago before they were born? This is the most stupid thinking I've ever seen. Judge people on that person. Do not try to put a blanket. It's the same thought that all cops are bad. That is lunacy. I've been in this business a long time. I know a lot of good officers. I've known a few bad ones. And what we have to do in law enforcement is make sure when we run across a bad one is we get them out of this business immediately. And if that means we get them out via jail or prison, that's okay too. But we all have to follow the law. That's my point. That's what every sheriff in this country should be doing. Well, I know you're a constitutionalist. I love your platform. And I hope you win for sheriff. And I hope then you move on to state politics and beyond because... We need to stop, and I'm not bashing lawyers, but we don't need 90% of Congress to be lawyers. We need them to be shopkeepers, ranchers, police officers, former Marines, you know, folks like that have actually lived out there. Uh, medical doctors, people like that, school teachers. It's just, we got a bunch of politicians up there believing their own flim flam. I want to go to phone calls, but Getting back to the situation with the war on police, do you agree with Sheriff David Clark of Milwaukee County up in Wisconsin that, that, that this war on police has been launched by Obama? I believe that Obama has played a huge part in this because he has stood so silent. When something happens in the black community, whether it was the Trayvon Martin issue that really didn't have direct police involvement, or it was the Ferguson incident, the New York incident, the Baltimore incident, he is in the Rose Garden giving speeches, and somehow a man that I knew in Harris County, Texas, was executed, executed, and it took the president three and a half, four days to make a private phone call to the widow. Nothing, no press conference, no So nothing. he didn't humanize him? No, it, it, was, it was business as usual while I think he was flying to Alaska uh, to rename Mount McKinley. That's how important it was. That is embarrassing. That, that's hurtful. Uh, police officers guard the gate, folks. And uh, if you don't uh, think it's so, imagine for a moment that 911 calls went unanswered, nobody showed up. You would quickly find out who's more important, the police officers or Barack Obama. Well, I'll say this. The Democratic Party can't try to take our guns and then have a war on police. It just shows a pure criminal communist instinct. And I mean, you can really get down to it. That's who they are. I never believed General Parton. I thought he was right about most of it. And all those other top experts saying it's communist, it's communist, it's communist. It's not just an ideology they use. They plan it. And they just, that's what they're into. It's insane. It's dangerous. Uh, finally, and then I'm going to go to calls here. I'm going to skip this network break. I'm the only one today. Try to be a good boy. But you talked about it earlier. If we don't stop this, what are the people going to do that have bought into this system when all the freebies are cut off? Because that's what totalitarians do. They have a phase where they hand everything out for free, but then they take it all away. Is the public so dumb that's gone along with this that if this all falls apart, they'll never even know what hit them? A great uh, many of them. Yes, I hate to use the word dumb, but if you're not willing to uh, educate yourself with what's going on, uh, you could be left uh, in the dark. And I think a great many people in this country are in for one heck of a shock 
uh, when the free stuff stops. I've never been anti-police, but I've been on air 20 years. I saw the development of the police state, the end of the Constitution, which came from the central government. I wasn't against police themselves. I was against the move towards totalitarianism. And we always said they'll then scapegoat the police before they really drop the hammer. That, that's always done in every other country, whether it be fascist or communist. It follows pretty much a, a, a formula. But the reason I've really reached out to police the last five or six years was they reached out to me or I experienced it with veterans, active duty, and police. Veterans are the most awake, then police after that, whether they be federal or local. That's why they want us to have a war with police is because the globalists realize the most awake group is the police and military. I've experienced that. Have you experienced that? That, that? that behind closed doors, the police really, compared to the public, I talk to cops, I mean, they're super awake compared to the public about how stuff works, who's behind things, what's going on. Uh, so we can bash cops all day, but I just discovered they're one of the most awake groups to the New World Order conspiracy. Well, you know, we have to be, Alex. Uh, you know, we live this stuff. I mean, the streets are not exactly a safe place. And so if police officers are not paying attention to their surroundings, uh, that's when we die. And we have to get better at doing what we're doing. We have to get uh, much more in tune with everything happening around us. So, you know, one point I wanted to make, you brought up the military, and, and I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've covered this. If you look at what Barack Obama has done by getting rid of all of these senior military officers, and I believe there is a very, very clear reason why. If you look at the oath taken by an enlisted member of the service versus the oath taken by an officer in the service, the officers take no oath to the commander in chief. It's only to the Constitution. So to get rid of these senior officers is very important if you can bring in your own flunkies, I'll call them, that will do what you want. So I think it is very telling to me that some of these very, very senior decorated uh, generals and admirals have been expelled from the service. Well, they're getting rid of combat vets. I noticed they've put a lot of Harvard uh, pencil pushers that were never in combat as top people. Yes, and, and again, you know, you look at this move that they want to promote taking guns away, Second Amendment rights away from veterans. Why do you think that is? You know, I think it's because, well, if you've been to combat, uh, it's probably a pretty uh, good chance that your ability to defend yourself with a weapon made you pretty proficient at it. So don't fall for this thing about that guns are bad and guns kill people. Bad people kill people. And, you know, I could lay my weapon on this desk. It'll sit here for into the next millennium and not going to harm a soul. It's going to take an evil heart to do it. So this push to get guns, they can't get the guns. You know, you've seen a DHS buying more ammunition than the military has. What could that possibly be for if not to possibly be used against us? Oh, they admit that's what it's for. And it's so creepy that it's all happening and we just see it progressing and it gets crazier by the minute. I just hope that the bureaucrats up there and, and, and the socialist professors that think they're running this show, I hope they realize if they actually start this, they're not going to win it. And believe me, I don't want it to start. I don't have any you know, delusions of grandeur. I just don't think they are really tuned in to what a true civil war in this country is going to look like. Yeah, you know, uh, Americans are, we're a unique bunch uh, because when you say American, what do you think about? Do you think about a particular color? No. You think about an ideology. We're a people from everywhere that have come here and call this place home. And so we're pretty protective of this place. And the thing that holds it all together is our founding documents. And that is why we must do everything necessary to protect those documents. And anybody who steps into office who does not uphold that oath that they take, that needs to be a criminal offense. Because it's bait and switch, and it's the most dangerous kind. Absolutely. Let's go to calls the next six minutes, then five more minutes with our guest. Then we're going to have Ted Nugent on at eight after next hour. He's impressive. Carl Pittman, he needs to be on cable news. He needs to get financial support. We need to put him in as sheriff. You want to fight the New World Order, folks? You've got to get down in the trenches. Getting this guy elected as sheriff over Harris County is a big win. That's four-plus million people that will have a constitutionalist in there and not a bunch of crazy totalitarians, because Battleground Texas, the left, is trying to take Houston over right now. And, I mean, they mean business, folks. Uh, let's go ahead, and I don't know who to go to first here. Uh, let's go to Ned. Uh, Ned, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, 
applaud Sheriff Pittman. I think that uh, he epitomizes what all sheriffs should be like. Uh, I live here in Fema Region 10, Southern Oregon, and uh, we've got a, a new black sheriff here who is really good, too. I, I, uh, I, well, one thing I'm really upset at is, that, you know, this gun issue is so strange because there are millions and millions of guns that aren't registered. And it's like, this is just such a joke. And in this uh, state here, the, the uh, communist socialist governor here has passed the law through illegally through the uh, uh, legislature saying that uh, everybody here in this state has to uh, register with the federal government. Yeah, no, that's so they uh, can come them. after, exactly, even though it's not a law that's constitutional, so they can have a persecution of gun owners. That's right. And it's also ammunition. They're doing the ammunition thing, too. I know. They're but coming I, for the I, guns. I, Look, I, how about this, uh, uh, Deputy Pittman? They came out and announced, as you know, outside of law, they're going to apply this algorithm that the VA has to everybody on Social Security. That if, and the FBI said... If you're getting your, your, your check wired to you, that means you're financially inept, and so you're going to be declared inept and lose your guns. I mean, that's crazy. Well, you know, uh, that example played out uh, here in the United States uh, not too long ago, and uh, strangely enough, in support of exactly what I'm talking about, the sheriff of that county, with others, stood and protected that veteran's right. That was in Oregon, too, in North Washington, yeah. And, and so the, the, that's just important. It goes to tell you all the things we're worried about if we can truly get good constitutional sheriffs in as many counties in the United States as we can, we can stop a lot of these government overreaches. Sure. We always hear about a police state. It, it's aimed at everybody just to collect revenue and all the rest of it. I'm against that. But that's not the average cop. I'm surprised people haven't. I'm surprised the police response and their restraint not going after people on radio saying it's time to go out and kill cops. I mean. If somebody said something about my family or my crew, go out and kill them, I would start, I would have trouble controlling myself. Well, but that's why we are professional law enforcement officers. If we go out and we begin to break the law, we are no better than those that we are sure. out there trying to, uh, to deal with. So, you know, we have to maintain restraint. Uh, what we need to do now is look at and readjust our tactics and procedures and how we do our business. Uh, but, you know... If, if you decide that you want to engage yourself in a conflict uh, with uh, law enforcement in this country, and I can tell you, uh, when elected sheriff of Harris County, if you decide that that's what you want to do in Harris County, and I truly hope you don't, uh, we're going to make it an absolute point that you lose. Well, I mean, I, uh, Louis Farrakhan, we're probably going to be on the show, and I don't want to get in a fight with him, but some of these other groups, they talk about having a war and, like, winning. Nobody's going to win this. It's going to be horrible. Yes. Yes, we, we, we don't need that. But there are some people that are, uh, they have a foregone conclusion that they are trying to push this thing to some sort of armed conflict. And that's a dangerous thing for everybody well, involved. That's because they're politically not going to win. They want to turn over the chessboard. Let's talk to uh, Brandon. Brandon, uh, what state are you calling in from? Virginia. Go ahead, sir. You're on the air. we got about a minute and a half in this segment. All right. Uh, I wanted to start by uh, getting senior Deputy Pittman gives his take on urban warfare, warfare drills. It seems like up here in Richmond that they happen almost every week. And these drills are just, they're, they're normal people that will be the enemy, whether it's pro-life or 9-11 truth. There's people protesting. Sure, so you're saying you're a Marine reservist. I see that on screen. We have it in the news that they are training to take on veterans and gun owners. They have the Marines training for that. I have video of it. Uh, thank you for the call. It's a great question. What do you make of this open buildup? You alluded to it earlier for a war with veterans. Well, you know, I like to believe that I can speak only for myself. Uh, that oath I took many years ago to protect and defend the Constitution means just that. Did not die when I left the Marine Corps. Uh, and it is very similar to the oath that I took when I uh, came into law enforcement. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you that there might not be some officers out there uh, that would behave badly. I'm not going to tell you there might not be some members of the military, but I have a lot of faith in the folks that uh, that absolutely the flag that they'll do the right thing. I think it's going to backlash if they order gun confiscation. I think it's going to be big because there was refusals in Katrina Thank to do it. We've never heard about it. GCA. We'll be back in 70 seconds. Final segment with Carl Pittman, carlforsheriff.com. If you don't support him, uh, even if it's $10, $20 donation around the country, you're insane. And if you live in the Houston area and you don't support him, I don't know. People always want to do something. It's a war, folks, against organized evil. And we have to get good people elected. Uh, we are taking phone calls here in this last five minutes. Then Ted Nugent, 
a friend of the uh, sheriff's deputy is going to be joining us.